We hope you enjoy this video from Level 5. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for all the updates. Hi, it's Alex from Level 5 here. Lots of people talk about lots of sorts of autonomous vehicles. There's autonomous cars, autonomous pods, autonomous delivery lorries. That's what's behind me. Well, I'm going to tell you also that I'm cheating a little bit. It's not an autonomous lorry. It's a special kind of lorry which actually carries an autonomous pod. So this is actually owned by Origo, which is a spin-out from a car manufacturer called RDM. Now they've brought, and they manufacture, that little pod over there. Let's go and have a look at it. Hello, Craig. Hi, you're right. Um, and you work for Origo, which built the pod, and how long have you been with the company? I've been with the company about a year and two months now. And did you work before? Um, I was at university before this, studying computer engineering. Hang on, so you've gone straight from a degree which is computer engineering, which is not specialist at all really, no. straight straight into working with autonomous vehicles? Yeah, I graduated um, a couple of years ago and then I did my dissertation in autonomous swarm techniques and getting robots to swarm and then I applied for this job and got this position. So there was a, what was the job exactly that you applied for? Um, well there wasn't actually a job there, I just emailed the CEO and asked whether any jobs were available and he said, come work with us for a bit, we'll see how we get on. And then a few weeks later, he offered me a job. So, so no Udacity Nano degree, no specialism in computer vision, nothing like that? No, everything I know now I've learned since I've been here. Absolutely fantastic. And, and now you're running autonomous vehicles and working on the development side as well? Yeah, I do a lot of development. I do a lot of testing as well with the vehicles. Um, and then run these conference days. Cool. Okay, well, um, without further ado, should we, should we go for a spin? Yeah, of course. Okay, so uh, talk us through what's, uh, what you're doing here. It's um, completely bespoke software built by Origo, isn't it? Yeah, so everything, the vehicle from the, from the ground up is built by Origo. So we built the platform, we built all the, the everything you see, and we built all the systems that control the vehicle, the autonomous controls um, part of it. So we came last week and just spent a few hours here. We, because we work on a completely closed loop system, we don't use any external mapping software. We do all our maps ourselves. So we were here last week and we came and took some data from the area and made this, this map. Then once we put the vehicle back in that map, we end up with it seeing the same features and it, it's able to then say, yeah, I can, I've seen them before, I know where I am now because I can see them again. And then um, we then set a, so we say, this path that we, you can see here is the one we'd like you to take. If you can, take that path. If it can't, it will change its route slightly, but that's the path we'd like you to take. So. That's what happens is we set the route and then once you tell it to go, that's what it tries to do. At very, very shortly, a couple of months, we'll be going into public use. So, And next year you've got the Oxford bus trial coming up as well, so that's going to be a different format vehicle. Yeah, it'll be a slightly larger vehicle. It'll have more seats in it and it'll be for longer journeys than these with a longer range um, and a bigger vehicle. But, but still a closed loop, essentially. Yeah, it's still the same system, but just on a bigger vehicle. And so, uh, for, for those of you who are not familiar with the, uh, the Oxford bus uh, route, it's basically a, it's a closed, almost tram-like system uh, of, uh, I think they're concrete paths, aren't they, that, that link lots of different uh, towns and villages together. So it's, it's basically like a bus expressway that is separate, mostly, from the main road network. Um, okay, well, um, let's go for a spin. doors were enclosed it's like Star Trek uh, you, you mentioned that you were involved in the in the testing process what what does that entail are you using only your own uh, test facilities um, at, at your base or are you going to formal test sites like you've got it uh, as part of the Innovate UK funded project we've got a test environment in Coventry and um, we do a lot of vehicle testing now with, with other companies that um, we do work for or we do trial days with or other things like that we've also got a large facility down in Milton Keynes where we run in the city centre and we have, have a um, fenced off part of the, um, the town where we can do other vehicle trials which are not um, as mature as the ones we're doing in the city centre. I'll, I'll let you keep on uh, setting up and I'll talk to camera for a moment. Hello. Um, right, so the interesting thing about Milton Keynes is that, um, as, as uh, Craig was mentioning there, um, is that the trials generally are taking place on areas which to you and I look like pavements, sidewalks, um, but the council have got together with their legal team and various different stakeholders and changed the legal status of those paths to become roads. 
then, in addition to doing that, then they added additional local city bylaws to say only permitted users are allowed to use those roads. So the rights situation over rights of way, highways, roads, in the UK is really, really complicated. It goes back some 500 years. There's some 200 different laws that apply. And it's extremely complex, I know, because I worked in it only for a little bit. Um, and um, so that means that the way autonomous vehicles can be used on the roads is quite complicated because even on a public highway, unless a law has been passed to reduce the rights available, actually pedestrians have the highest rights of way. Anyway, so we're off. At the breakneck speed of how fast are we going, Craig? About walking speed, a metre and a half um, per second. Okay, so that's what, three miles an hour, about five kilometres an hour, something yeah, like that? Something like that. And um, is it always going to be that speed? Obviously on the Oxford busway, that's uh, when that trial starts, um, that, that's going to be considerably faster, surely? Yeah, definitely. Um, we're going slow here because it's quite a small place and there's a lot of people around um, that aren't aware that it's an autonomous vehicle. So we're taking the time today, but on other places we go, like Milton Keynes, we do run a lot faster than this. We, our aim for Milton Keynes is twice walking speed, and then the Cambridge busway is a lot faster than again. The vehicle can do 25 kilometres an hour, so that's where we can go up to. That's that's uh, that's a cheetah with a limp, um, probably sort of speed, or uh, or me trying to play badminton. Okay, so we're we're doing a, a full turn, full 360 degree turn. Um, and is that the tightest turning circle? It seems like it's about the same as a smart car. We're getting to near the, the tightest turn on, the, on this on this area. Obviously, there's some wheel slip, so you lose a little bit. But. And um, what, what's the compute platform in this particular vehicle? Obviously, with speeds this low, then I'd imagine the, the compute requirements even for um, single sensor uh, validation and navigation are actually quite small? Um, I would say relatively for an autonomous vehicle but compared to a regular vehicle or regular computer it's still quite powerful. So with the Oxford busway vehicle that's going to be obviously larger with more seats. What sort of compute power is going to be on there? What sort of platform are you thinking about using? Um, it's a lot more controlled environment so you probably don't need as much as you imagine. Um, so similar to what we have in this. Right. Okay, that's that's interesting to know. But uh, So I suppose in a way it's because you've got a controlled closed environment that really you're not having to do the you know separation of navigating between multiple lanes, having to avoid lots and lots of high-speed obstacles. It's all basically, it, it's a closed lane and there's, there's not much to stop you. Yeah, exactly. That's correct. Yeah. That's right. Now, are we going to hit that catering trolley? I'd like to see what the vehicle does and what the uh, errors come up. Or is it going to stop us naturally anyway? Okay, so it's stopping us naturally anyway. Uh, we didn't get a chance to see the emergency systems kick in and the ejection seats anyway. Um, well, Craig, thank you very much. It's been very insightful. Um, and, um, well, I really hope you enjoy your, your career at Origo and uh, long may it last. And thank you for your uh, career insights as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. That's all from us. Thanks for watching this video by Level 5. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Level 5 Jobs and check out our website, level5jobs.com.